be a joke. My turn. I got it. Everybody right gets here. a turn, right? So. Yay! Suck it to me. Smile, you're on camera. All the time. <laughs> Behind the door in front of us. So, anyway, Jill gave me more notice this time. I wrote this in um, uh, March. <laughs> and so I've been saving it, so I didn't have any use, uh, it didn't come up yet. So basically I gave it to my men's group. They were my, they're, you guys are supposed to be my test audience. They became it. So it went a little long. So I said, no, 40 minutes, we're good. But it went more than 40 minutes. So I might, this might be part one of part two. So if you like it, I'll see you next week. If not, you know, so we'll Are you going to put a timer on? That's right. Yeah, yeah, we'll put a timer. So, um, I do have extra copies if anybody wants to, any of these, it's eight pages, but, you know, and I will be attaching it to uh, the email in the PDF, so, but if you do want one, I'll take one. All right, anybody? Sure. All right. Thank you. There you go. I got to keep one from me. So, anybody? No? Good? Okay. All right. You got one back there? Yeah, I figured five is plenty. So, basically, so basically when I was doing this, um, she asked me to prepare something. I was thinking, you know, because I gave one on, uh, like, Origins, I, I gave one on uh, uh, the uh, Armor of God. And so I was thinking, what would be a good one? And I was, uh, you know, doing my research and, you know, doing my editing, as I always do, and uh, it came to me, the Word. It just made sense, the Word. And we, even though we're all, you know, seasoned Christians here, it's such something that uh, always touched me that the Word became flesh. And as much as I've known the Lord since 79, you know, and, and ashamed of, shamefully saying that sometimes because you like to think what you've done, but it's an amazing walk. And I know we all have stories about how the Word of God has turned, touched our lives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, as much as I listen to CSN daily now, I don't watch news anymore. Uh, CSN is my go-to, and it's amazing. We all know what's going on in the world, and we know that God is in control. Amen. And that there is no yeah. surprise. He's not like, oh my God, they did that? <laughs> you know, please. You know, and so that's the thing. So. So just getting started, and one of the funny things I told my men's group is what I wrote down at the top of my presentation was, slow down when getting started. Uh -huh. Because as you get going, it's like, da 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 You know, and I'm, I'm, I could talk pretty fast sometimes, but uh, for the sake of this and whoever might be watching, because I do get a kick, I'm in touch still. Uh, in fact, my friend from Pakistan, I've encouraged her to keep putting up uh, her posts. You know, she wanted to, to need some more help with what they're doing in Pakistan. And she watched, she found us through my Thursday men's group, but now sees our stuff. And so I told her, just tag me on your photos. So all this stuff, you never know. I have even encouraged her to start sharing some of our, our praise and worship music from Thursday and here, and share it with her kids there in Pakistan. And you, like I said, I got in touch. In fact, I found out who shared JT's piece in the Philippines and wanted to start reaching out to her. And so there's other people that do get to see this that actually watch it, which is encouraging. So, as in anything, and getting started, I'm going to have to read a lot of this because, you know, a lot of this was, this is my second presentation of this. But is that to begin with John 1, the Word was God and became flesh. An awesome thought, as it brought up. It said, the eternal Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was that the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You know, and you just, you know, you start with that. I mean, that, that's like month study right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really can just go with the fact that, like, just that concept that I heard one preacher say, he goes, it's going to take us all of eternity to understand what the cross really meant. And I went like, I love these lines. You know, I love them. I'm big on a lot of quotes and lines. And so when, and, and so when it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glories of the one only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And you know, we always say that, grace be with you, grace be with you. But wow, the whole idea of what grace really means, you know. And uh, so that, and then of course, led me into Genesis 1. The spoken word created the heavens and the earth. We do have that ability. You know, we don't understand it. I know I don't, you know. But, I, but the concept of all these decades of being around, you know, from learning and growing and making every mistake and more to come, which that's grateful that grace comes from. But in the New King James, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. The darkness uh, was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And, and again, 
in the beginning when Moses wrote this and all, they, they didn't have a Bible story, they didn't could go online. All this stuff is all being written. So right. for us to have the benefit of being able to print it out and do these, to have the tools that are accessed today, we have no excuse, you know. And, and it's, again, we're just, you know, it's always going to be a growing process. And so then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the, the light day. And the darkness he called night, so the evening and the morning were the first day, all from the spoken word. And again, I know we all are seasoned Christians here, but sometimes I think sometimes we are uh, missing the whole depth of what that means, that we do have that power. And we do have, especially these days alone, I hear a lot of people going through some stuff, and I go, by the grace of God we go. And it really is by that. And then, you know, it goes on in Genesis where it says, then God said, then God said, and then God said, and so on. And he always, everything he said created the animals, the everything that we do to the sixth day, us. And, and just the, like I said, so even though we have the ability just to read it and, and, and to like intellectually understand it, again, we'll have all eternity to really understand it. You know, again, we're travelers passing through a foreign land. And I know a lot of people going through stuff, but we really, it's a temporary deal. And we are the tents. And so, uh, so something I wrote here was uh, words matter. Something I've had to learn <laughs> for, uh, and always had for years. Uh, being in negotiations for years in real estate and short sales, uh, the, uh, understanding my communication skills was very important because I had to uh, do things that for nine years when I would do things, I, I tell people this is a joke, but it's not a joke, but boy, they got some bad lawyers in New York. And because in New York and Jersey, they have this thing called, I call it the Lawyer Employment Program. Because <laughs> you have to have an attorney. Where here, you don't. We have, uh, we have um, uh, the title companies and everything's done under one roof, which it should be. Not there. So I had to beat up on some lawyers sometimes. And everything is your word. Your word matters. Everything you do. That's the whole thing that I uh, thought would be fun. I like this from uh, Psalm 119, 105. The, your word is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. And he says, back in the days, uh, people would put little oil burners on their feet when they would walk at night. Uh, they would walk so carefully so not to fall into a pit or see dangers ahead. They, a lot of times, would travel at night, especially with caravans. And so with that, uh, and when you think about that, how you have to walk very carefully with the word of God, we walk carefully. We have to be careful about our, uh, just in our travels, in our daily, like I said, especially these days. Remember, I wiped and broke this in March. <laughs> A lot's happened since March, right? Exactly, so, yeah. And so I found, I, I found this, I just kind of, I found this on a site and it said, have you ever been walking somewhere at night with a flashlight and then suddenly the battery dies and the light goes out? And for a moment, panic sets, sets in. But if you wait a moment or two, your eyes will adjust to the dark and you will be able to see enough to continue most of the time depending on your circumstances. And that's yeah. the way it is. Because a lot of times when we are, if something hits us left field. I mean, you get that, uh, I like this uh, song, the sunscreen song. And he says, you can worry, but worrying is like trying to chew a, a bubble gum to solve an algebra equation. He goes, the real, <laughs> the real worries come to you on some Tuesday afternoon that blanks on you at 4 p.m. and you know. That's the things, and those are the things that when like our flashlight going out, like we just go like, oh, what's going on? Then when you, you, then you deal with the impact, and then you realize, wow, that, you know, then, okay, Lord, where are you in this? Now, a lot of us don't start out saying, okay, Lord, where are you in this? Usually as we call someone, we go, oh, my God, you know, we go, oh, I can't believe this happened, and those are the things. But the thing is just that that is uh, normal and being human, and we have to accept our humanness, too, because... Uh, it's very important. Cause we panic. Panic, like, yeah. And by the way, I do appreciate any that. interjections, by the way, too. So, so apart from God, we are working, walking in the dark spiritually, speaking, and can only see a short distance in front of us. Sometimes, like, like how many people, have you seen this on, the, on the, a lot of the memes and all, how many people's uh, five-year uh, day plan are, uh, worked out for them? Oh, you, know? And, you know? Those are all the garbage, right? And that's why I say, and I, and I shared this, I talked to God the other day about business. And again, I know a lot of people that have businesses, and I pray for them, and I hope they go well. But I think it's very, under Trump, maybe, you know, whoever, your political party, but you at least could plan. Under this, we have, we can't plan. And it's just what we really is. It, it never, the only, I think of anything about Biden did, is he, he brought people back to faith. Because it's like, oh God, what's happening? You know? <laughs> you know? And so, Amen. just saying, bro. Amen, and brother. Let me, I love let me, that. Let me get some messages about this one. <laughs> 
true. You know what I'm saying? True. So guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, you gotta see the humor because you know, I tell you, laugh you last, right? Which is like seven, it'll be six to five Saturday, right? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Here we But you know what? I'm, I never felt better. I really did, and I, I really have. And I'm telling you that. Uh, as much as that, um, well, like I said, I claim, I can claim cranky old man status now. Because, <laughs> you have the excuse. Don't mess with old guys. Yeah, yeah. So. You have the excuse now. I love it. Yeah, yeah before I was just a cranky guy. So, I'm now a nice guy, but I can, you know, get in moods. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I got an electric human. We have so, moods, honey. We, we all do, right, baby? All right. Yes. So yes. God's, God's word is alive with everything we need so we can see the spiritual darkness that surrounds us to direct mm -hmm. us to safety. And we have to always know that, that his light will always direct us to safety. That's true. I was, li I was listening to uh, messages about, like, with Joseph and what he went through for the years when he got sold into slavery and everything. And, and, but he said, God blessed him. And everybody's going, huh? How did he bless him? But when he tells the story, then all of a sudden, in a moment, he became second in command. Mm -hmm. And it took all those trials to get him to God honing him to, his, honing him to his uh, moment of glory, which not only saved it saved the nation of Egypt, it saved the nation of Israel that was just beginning. That's right. So we become a lighthouse to those who are stranded in the darkness, that we offer hope like a beacon of light in the midst of a storm. How many people you know, how many calls you get a day, Jewel, you know, or, or text? Oh, I mean, how many of you people are definitely lights to other people in the world? You don't know. The thing is, sometimes, again, you know, the line you've heard, sometimes we are the only Bible people ever read, you know? And so because of that, we are... Um, we are that hope. I, I literally, I can tell you stories. I just went to a funeral Saturday. Uh, it was a former friend, her husband, I think 59, uh, just passed away. Oh. And, I, and, uh, and, and, and I've heard of many, I'm sure we all have stories like that too, but yeah. just the fact I talked to her, she was a uh, dear friend of mine from years ago. And we talked for an hour and a half last week. And just some of the things, and I said, I said, I hope I'm not bombarding you with too much. She wanted some information stuff for her daughters regarding the vaccine and all. And uh, I says, I hope this isn't too much. She goes, no, you're actually helping me distract me from my other stuff. Because, you know, she's got some real stuff and, and, and story after story of other people that have passed away. And so sometimes I have to tell them that, you know, again, we're just travelers passing through. And it's an opportunity. You know, some of these people do know the Lord, but some of them don't. But at that moment, they don't. Our word matters. And you never know who you're lifting up. That's right. The Bible truly illuminates our path to the Father, but we first must be willing to put down our flashlight, allow Him to adjust our spiritual eyes, to see a new light that uh, better than the one we have known. And uh, I always like these quotes and phrases from many sources and uh, from movies too. But uh, the, of course, a lot of you've heard the Bible, the acronym, basic instructions before leaving Earth. Whoa, oh, I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a good never one. Heard There's, oh, you never heard that one? It's no, great. Well, it's a great yeah, song. There's this uh, group, Christian group, years ago. It's called Burlap to Cashmere. I love the name of their group. But they have a song called uh, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. I should include, I'll include a link to it. It's a really cool, it's, a, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of like a snappy little tune, too. But it's, it's kind of fun. Um, I like this from Proverbs 10.23. A wise man's fun is being wise. You know, remember he's doing it. Because a lot of times we don't really like because, like I said, I'm, who doesn't like to win a debate, you know? And especially being cranky and all that and been researching forever, you know, 30, 40 plus years as a Christian, 30 plus years on political things. And I literally have to say to people, debate me. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, argue, and some of them, it's like arguing that the sun's out right now. And you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, don't, they don't want to be bothered with the truth or the facts. And so some have ears to hear and eyes to see. Some don't. And in, in fulfillment of Matthew uh, uh, 24 and uh, Luke, um, uh, Mark 13, Jacob's, J days of Jacob's troubles, those days where, which I believe, a lot of preachers believe we're in right now. And uh, the fact is, is that the coming of the Lord is near, nearer than ever, either here or in the air, but the fact is it's coming. That's and those right. that's an important word to know. Uh, here's one from uh, so yeah, Fool's fun is being bad, a wise man's fun is being wise in the Living Bible. And from a King James, a uh, New King James, to do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. And that wisdom really does, like, again, when people are going through stuff, you are sometimes that living water that some of them never uh, really thought about. And like you said, you never heard of the basic instructions for a living earth. That's a great line. I love That's it. That's a great line. And, uh, and I love lines. I always love quotes. And so, uh, see, the, uh, the Bible, I like this from Chuck Missler. Um, uh, the Bible is a supernatural book. Uh, uh, the writers wrote what heaven told them to write. That was some Jack Wire. Uh, and uh, Chip Missler says, it is an integrated message system from outside our time domain. Mm -hmm. And I went like, oh yeah, I like that one. 
because we don't be like, okay, we're reading the Bible, not realizing that we, we're part of, in fact, I heard a preacher speak this week about it. He says, we're, we're involved in this, like, this amazing show going on. And whether you believe it or not, it does not matter. You know, I believe in gravity, you know, go test it. You know, yeah. you're part of something that is so much bigger than us, and yet he loves us individually. I just posted something about, I have a few pieces like this, but they show the uh, super cluster of, our, of one of our, of the 10 million galaxies out there, and they got this little dot that says, you live here, mm -hmm. you know? And I always love that, because it puts things in perspective. But that God of the universe loves not only that dot, but our, us being that little dot on that dot. And he cares and loves us more that's than right, we can ever right. understand. That's right. And that's where the word and the power of that, to me, fascinates me. And as much as we're all going to have days, down days, dog days, whatever, it's a fantastic concept to know. He loves you more than you could possibly know. And, and I think that's hard because sometimes we look in the mirror and we don't see that love. I always tell people, if you want to get a good laugh in the day, you go look in the mirror, get your first laugh, you're done. You know? <laughs> so, and this way, because have fun with it. Because yeah. he made you. And he right. made you for unique purposes. Purposes, like I said with Joseph, that we don't know, especially in these days, that what's coming, how we're going to be fantastically used in ways we have never have imagined. So, I always love that. Isn't that something? Yes. So, um, so I was listening to Chip, Chip Ingram, this is back in you know, March. Uh, we were part of a supernatural community which has supernatural agenda. Mm. Uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, wow. because it is, isn't that cool? That's wow. God's agenda. It's God's agenda, and he, we're part of the team. When in the thousand year reign of Christ, we have jobs, <laughs> and there ain't no unemployment. We are being prepared for something that is Amen. far beyond Beautiful. what we do. And things that what you're doing now, I, I, I tell you, what I do with uh, with editing and research and everything, my computer skills, I guess it's well, maybe this is part of my job is there, you know, what, you know, dealing with that in those areas where. Uh, we're going to be used in very profound ways, in ways that people could not uh, really see or know. The apostles didn't sit around. They didn't say, hey, let's start a church, right? He says, Jesus was the fulfillment of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. There were 500 witnesses. There was so much evidence. People have to be willfully blind not to see it. Mm -hmm. In fact, this past few months that I started doing this, <laughs> because, you know, debating, right? So, so I love this where I'll say to people, I, people that I'm not, like, I'm, I am witnessing to them, but they don't know it's coming because I'm, you know, coming around the corner. And, uh, and I would say to them, I go, look, okay, either Jesus, this is the problem, this is the issue. Either Jesus rose from the dead or he didn't. If he didn't, you got nothing to worry about. If he did, you got a lot of reading to do. That's it. <laughs> Leave it at that. Leave it there. And you know what? They look, I go, that's all I'm saying. And people want to start getting to me. I, you know, I always know, I brought up many times being a Jewish Christian. I got tired of the crap, excuse me, but the crap that Christians would throw at me. Because Jesus was either a swear word, he, he was, uh, the Jews killed him, or if I didn't believe him, I'm going to hell. You didn't sell me. You didn't get me. But I met a guy in the first dealing job I had at the Four Queens Hotel. I started there in 78, 79. This guy ran a Bible study. 9 o'clock, uh, Friday night. What do you think 22-year-olds are doing on Friday at night at 9 o'clock? Oh. Ain't going yeah, to Bible please. study, right? Oh. So, right. So, basically, he did it. And he started talking about the love of God. And when I kept telling him, I could, sorry I couldn't make it, he gave me his address. He just, this is what got me. He goes, David, you'll come when you're ready. Sold. Sold. Don't shove it down my throat. I mean, I mean that's, it. that's why I said to you, either Jesus rose or he didn't. That, you know, if he died for your sins, if he rose from the dead, that's it. Everything else is pure debate. You want to go words with me? You know, I'm, I'll have fun with you. But in a loving way, in a loving way, but I still want to, you know. Because I love you. But that's a good loving way when you well, do that. Well, you know what's funny is I heard this. It's that with all the stuff I know about the facts and the shutdown and all this junk, only thing that matters to me now is I care about, I've said this to a lot of you know, but all I care about is your eternal soul. Amen. I don't care about your human idiosyncrasies. Keep your mama dramas to yourself. Okay, but your eternal soul, one uh, effect, it was the guy who created the Salvation Army. I just found out the author of this. And he's the guy who says a Christian should be held dangled over hell, I think it was like for 20 or 30 minutes, to really get the impact of what hell is about. It's true. Our words will save someone from hell. I can know all this stuff, but remember what Paul said, I could be a banging gong, I have all these gifts. But if I don't have the love, if I don't share the stories, <laughs> right? If I don't share this, then. I'm just another banging gong. Just some guy knows a few good things and can snappily put it out there. 
but that ain't just it. And so as much as I love uh, people, and sometimes we don't, because like you said, it's hard to pray for them. And it is. I can't say that I always pray for these people. I don't. I, and I sometimes do. I pray for just the Lord's will to be done. And let that be done. Yep. So, let me see where I'm doing this. <laughs> so, if I go long, you, you'll let me know. No, I don't have that timer. I got to try to remember where I started. But I'm going to try to get through this. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> if you get bored, you'll let me know, right? No, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. Though. It's a fun and Can you see my face? I'm enjoying yes, it. Yes, you are. No, I, I got that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, here I did. Where did I put my camera? So, yeah. But, um, yeah, where did I put my camera? Oh, it doesn't matter. I was, like, taking pictures when I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> so... So anyways, but I got a kick, like I said, I said, these guys who, like I said, people said, well, what about the apostles? Where's the proof? This guy, I forgot the author, but he was a cold case detective, and he wrote a book based on information from the Bible, because he was not a believer. And then he started doing what a lot of people did, and they started doing this research, and he concluded that Jesus was who he was, and that he was God in the flesh. Case for faith. Okay, yeah, right? And so, oh, here we go. I got to do this. If I don't do this, then I'm, I haven't done my job, have I? <laughs> there we go. Smile. There you go. Okay. You know, I usually take the pictures of going, so there. You gotta have fun with this stuff because, hey, I do trust and love you guys. I and, have you know, fun. I you were fun guys, right? No, so anyway, so, never, so I didn't use this. No, so it goes. So people, oh, this is a good one. I like this. People ask for proof of the Bible, right? Where's the proof? And a king would ask this to somebody, I, was, I forgot, it was hundreds of years ago. He goes, the Jews are the proof. The Jews are the proof. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and they go, why? He goes, because he was, the premise was the king was asking for proof. And the thing is, is that they, uh, they were decimated in 70 AD. And they kept talking about praying for the restoration of Israel. And uh, there was, uh, and, and then of course, 1948, the, uh, uh, the um, um, uh, UN sanction of that they became a nation state. They, they lost their language, they lost that. No nation that has ever fallen. In fact, there was, I love the story with Jonathan Kahn, and he gets in the aspect of how this guy, General Allenby, who did not want to be in the military, but his grandmother, when he was a child, said, pray for the restoration of Israel. And so he always would, uh, you know, she'd always do that with him. So eventually he did go into the military. After World War I, uh, he was coming into what was the Palestinian area. And I don't think it was called that, but that's what we know it as today. And so these Arabs, they heard this guy Allenby was coming. Well, they thought Allah B, like Allah's coming. Oh. They fled. He had no opposition, and England retained, got the land. Now, this was a desolate land. How do we know that? Because even uh, Samuel Clemens, which is Mark Twain, he wrote about it. He says nothing could grow here. And then eventually they got it in 48. Then they developed the land. It's a flourishing area now. God has awesome. blessed that land. And that, to me, there's your proof. You know, you want proof? I mean, that's just starters, you know, but we only have how much time tonight. But for anybody that wants to get into it, you know, somebody says, well, explain this to me. You want me to explain in five, ten minutes what I've learned over 40 years. Oh, I know. We're going to take, a, this is going to take time, you know. Peace. And so some people have to have patience. So, and of course, no, no presentation on the word wouldn't be appropriate without James 3. James 3, the tongue, the little rudder. The untamable tongue, my brethren, let not uh, many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things, so who does not stumble in the word? He is a perfect man who is to bridle his whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and that we turn their whole body. Look at ships. Only oh, they are so large, they're driven uh, by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. And uh, that's uh, something where, uh, you know, talking about the word, how the, uh, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. And, you know, again, I guess things... I'd like to take back some of your words sometimes. Well, I heard this preacher bring up this one. I thought this was really good about tongue and gossip. And believe me, I, you know, again, you know, you, know, you look, go, okay, yeah, you know, preaching to the choir. But because I have to look in the mirror on this stuff. And the thing is, the man asked the master how to redeem himself with the slander he spoke and the grief he had caused. So he says, go place a feather on every door. And he came back and said to the master, I did that. Now what? He told him now to go retrieve all those feathers. <laughs> He says, the man says, I cannot. The wind has already blown them away. Mm -hmm. He goes, the master said, that is how it is with your words. Mm -hmm. All right? Wow. I love that point and thought about it because wow. it's right. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Very profound. And, and very profound. And it, it really is. And, and again, thank God for CSN because I'm editing and I've got my little earbud in all day long. And I said, oh, wait, i got to, you know, I got to stop my editing and type. You know? Mm -hmm. But uh, so the power of the answered prayer. Uh, Daniel, uh, in fact, uh, Jack Whitwire talked about this. Uh, Courageous living, the glorious man. 
And he talked about how Daniel's prayer was answered in three weeks. The angel Gabriel was fighting the prince of uh, uh, Persia. A lot of you guys know the story. And the devil, the devil is a strategist with a plan. He is folded and ruined, but still wants to hinder the work of God. We will be attacked, and the words of God is our weapon. If you remember, Jesus always used the words of Deuteronomy. He never said, you know, he said, I get a kick out of this one, how he says, uh, he says, I can give you all these kingdoms. Jesus didn't say, you can't. He just refused it, because that's the deal with what's going on right now. Who controls that? So basically, he says, so we'll be attacked. There is warfare going on. We have the Lamb of God and the Holy Spirit with us. So show, show forth his praises in a dark and wicked world. The fight never ends until we get home. You know, you never, you know, you never arrive. Right. You never arrive. You arrive when they either go to your funeral or the rapture comes. You know, and that's why I say to people is that, you know, when people, we hear people die, and the first thing I ask, do they know the Lord? And they go, well, yeah, they knew the Lord. They go, I know death is hard on the living. But the truth is, they're home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say, I don't have a death wish, but I'm saying I'm almost a bit envious. You know, I'm just saying that. They're home. Yep. You know, right. I mean, they're with Jesus. We, and, and so there is something to be said <laughs> about either. our mm -hmm. understanding the profoundness to be happy for them. Mm, you know? That's right. Yes, we miss them. You know, and we do. And Jesus, there's a great line Jesus wept. He knew what was happening with Lazarus, but, you know, he mm -hmm. felt for his sisters and all. Even though he knew he was going to raise them, he had compassion. So I have compassion right. on those who have that to deal with. But also, too, they're home. You know, and that's why I've had, I've told my family members and friends, I go, look, when my time comes, and I said, if all of a sudden I'm not here, then that's the wrap. But if all of a sudden, you know, you come visit me at my funeral, remember what I said. You know, remember that I'm home. And I go, and I go, I, I, I know I still have some work to do. Believe me, there's a lot of times a lot of people didn't think I did. And so, and nor did I. But, um, but the point is, is that we're home. And I think that's a word of encouragement. That's right. That Amen is, that. needs to be, a lot of Christians really... As much as they have their grief, and I do understand the missing of the human body, just attempt. Just attempt. That's right. So, anyway, uh, so tell them that the word of God about answering prayer, the only good thing that comes from the shutdown was how God blessed me. <laughs> A lot of people are saying, okay, Lord, you know, you want, I talk about answer prayer, you know, words, because a lot of prayer warriors here, right? And I feel, you know, and I figure what I do through my presentations through online and other things is blessing people. People have told me that has been that. Amen. And uh, it's a lot of work. It's Amen. a lot of work. Amen. But people, again, the Pakistan people, the Philistines, I think that one time when <laughs> Gary Hart uh, gave his message and testimony about his life, and somebody in Michigan saw it and uh, wanted to get in touch with him, and she used to go to his father's church in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just never know. You just never know. I can tell you stories that are true, great stories. So anyway, so but basically is that the prayers that were answered for me, I, I, I swear that I said, I says, okay, Lord, you want me to keep doing this? i got to be funded. So a friend of mine from my men's group uh, sends me a link to the PUA money, and, uh, and I, I must fought five, six people because I'm not dealing with the government. I'm not going to deal with this. So anyways, he, so he calls me a week later, and he says, have you done anything with that link? I go, no, nah, I've been busy. He would not get off the phone with me until I filled it out. Well... I fill it out on a Wednesday, and Monday I get a card with a bunch of money on it, and I go, okay, all right. You know, because well, what do you do? I'm always fighting God, right? Like, okay, come on. Where and was the money from? It was from the PUA, Pandemic Unemployment System. Oh, it was for gig good. workers like myself. Oh, I, since I didn't have a regular job, I worked gigs. Everything was shut down. And so uh, there was nothing coming in. And so then, uh, then actually a car accident I was in about two months, three years, uh, three, two years, three months prior, that finally funded. And it wasn't a lot, you know, still about five grand, but still, you know. Hey, it's big bought, bought, it bought equipment. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, then, uh, and then they shut us down for a bit. And then 17 weeks later, we got another bundle of money. Three times. So it's just, and I was like, okay, I got you. Okay, you, you answered my prayer three times over. So, and more, and more. But the thing is, is that, you know, of course it ended now, but he's, he's going to provide another way. I've got a couple good jobs that I just did, and, you know, they paid well. And so, fortunately, it's, he hasn't, you know, hasn't let me down. So basically, uh, let's see. So I tell people how I like phrases and quotes from many sources in the Bible and also from movies. And there was a line I liked, I probably shared with you the movie Shadowlands. There was a cool story about C.S. Lewis. And it was with Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger. Didn't get a lot of notoriety, but what a unique story about C.S. Lewis later in his life. If you get a chance, I have it on flat, or I can send it to you on Google Drive. Just a unique movie. And uh, so anyway, but Anthony Hopkins portrayed him, and, the, and I love this line. It took me years to really get it down, but it says, 
God is the st sculptor and we are the stone. Even though the blows of his chisel hurts us so much, it's what makes us perfect. That's right. Oh, I love that. I should make that into a song. No. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. Well, you know, it'll Te be, text yeah. me that. We're gonna I will, I will, well, email, yeah. email, email. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. What's the name of the booty? Oh, uh, Shadowlands. And I, it will be in my notes. Uh, I will be sending you this. This is page three if you want it. How far are we going here? We should collaborate. Yeah, right? Well, I, got, I love lines. I love these things. But isn't that a great line? Uh, yeah. Can and, you say it again, please? Oh, yeah. God is the sculptor and yes. we are the stone. And even though the blows of his chisel hurt us so much, it's what makes us perfect. Wow. I, I took me a while it. to learn how to say that. Uh, while I grab, grab all the time. Awesome. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. And I'm telling you, this movie didn't get yeah. real notoriety. And, 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 and I mean, come on, Anthony Hopkins, yeah. Deborah Winger. I and love it. Yes. Yes. You're right, exactly. It's very, it's a true story. It was, oh, I love it how, um, I love this line where the teacher was uh, trying to, talking, they were at some party. And, uh, and this guy goes, oh yes, Mr. Lewis, he tries to take complicated situations and subjects and try to make them so easy. And like C.S. Lewis, he's like, well, Hopkins just looks at him like, and that would have, like, he didn't say anything, but isn't that what a teacher's supposed to do? Take these complex subjects and do it. That's why we have Bible study, prayer meetings. Take this, take the Word of God, the Word, and make it in an understandable means that anybody could understand. That's, it's really like the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer. Give me my, day, my daily bread. Yeah. You know, like the fulfillment of the manna that was given daily, except for the Sabbath, they got double portion. It's all the Word. It's all there. That's right. It's amazing. And so basically, so, um, so my friend Alana gave it to me. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to get into this other movie. <laughs> I love these lines. Uh, there's four quotes. Of like I don't know how many of you saw this movie, The Big Short. But yeah. it was about the financial crisis in 07 08. Right. A lot of language in the movie, right on the money. That's what I did for nine years. I was in the short sale business. That shutdown created my industry. Well, there's an industry, but it created an industry. And so, um, so in the, middle, the beginning of the movie, they have this thing, and there was only like two people in the theater. I, I saw it, I took the subway, so I wanted to see this. So, of course, I got my little camera, and, I'm t and then there's nobody in there, so I'm texting myself all these quotes, right? And trying to, so I can look them up when I get them home. You know, hey. Yeah. I'm, I'm fun to hang out with, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and so, so uh, this one was by Haruko Mar. I can't even say the last name, uh, but the novel was called IQ84, and I love this line: "Everyone deep in their hearts is waiting for the end of the world to come." Mm. Wow! No, because there is a thing in Joel about beware of those who say we want to see the day of the Lord, mm -hmm. and I mean we all want the rapture. We want Christ to come back. That is the promised hope, but. He also warns us not to go, come on, go get him, get him, God. Mm -hmm. we got to be careful of that, too. But secretly in our hearts, we all want to see the end of the world. That's that just like, okay, that was interesting. But like, the best is yet to come. Well, it, it's interesting. But everybody, even non-Christians, they're seeking. Look at the Twelvers with the Imams, you know, with the Islam. Mm -hmm. They're trying to bring forth this end. They're doing it through evil means. Unlike mm -hmm. us, we're seeking God's will. They're trying to bring it on themselves. It's a real dark side of that. There's another one I like from uh, Mark Twain. It was an on-screen quote. It ain't what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that ain't so. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love the twist of words, right? Yes. Isn't that a great line? Yes. You know, and uh, this is a good one. From Overheard at a Washington, D.C. bar. Truth is like poetry, and most people hate poetry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Now remember, they use a little more of a, a verbiage in it, but I, you know, for our Bible study, we're keeping it G-rated. So, but it was right. It's so funny. It's so but this cool. one I really like too. And this is towards the end. This is a guy named Mark Baum, and he was a purist when it came to all this was going on with derivatives and the shutdowns and the the fraud with the AAA ratings with these all these rating agencies. And he finally just said this. We live in an era of fraud in America, not just in banking, but in government, education, religion, food, even baseball. What bothers me isn't that fraud is not nice or that fraud is mean. For thousands of years, fraud and short-sighted thinking have never, ever worked. Not once. Eventually, you get caught. Right. Things go soft. When did we forget that? I really thought we were better than this. I really did. Right. Yes. And that's what we're seeing. This is this is not right. 607. Right. Okay, even though the movie was made later, but nothing is new. Ecclesiastes, nothing new under the sun. Right. Our words, these words, the way people put this stuff together, secular or Christian. Mm 
That's right. You know, they, you have to really do it. He says, uh, I like this. Um, oh, this is the one I told you. In fact, uh, yeah, every, uh, every Christian should be hung over hell for 10 minutes to really understand what it's about and why we should have a passion about want, wanting to see anyone go there. That's right. And, and I, believe me, I have a friend. I've told you a few of them. This guy I've known for years. And on 779, he was the best man at my wedding. Really did something stupid. I mean, he did something, something in 2006 and before. But this time, I told him, you didn't just cross the line. You crossed the state line. I mean, I, to the point where you invited me to the lake uh, yesterday, and I, I have, I, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> what? And so, but, I, but God put him in my life, and I know that. And I have to deal with that. And I know that I love him as far as what I just said about him not being in hell. But the fact is, you know, he claims that he knows the Lord. And, you know, no fruit. You know, but God's using me in his life, and so I have to remember that. Because I say this to people, <laughs> I really, this is, again, going to be 65. We are really just kids in big bodies. You know, we think because we're older and we're doing this and we're little, you know, this or that or no hair. Who cares, right? But we're just big kids in big bodies. We have been spending our entire life trying to figure out things and then to come to an end of our physical existence and realize what we really do not know. That is humbling. That is when God can really mold us. When we really do empty ourselves. You know, I try to always remember when I'm getting up. Well, thank you for the bed. Thank you for being on a nice home. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a food full of fridge. Maybe yeah. too, maybe too yeah. much food from the fridge. But, <laughs> but whatever it is, I'm, I'm cool with it because he's providing. And we are. I have this other thing I should probably send you guys too. But it's called. Uh, um, it's called. I think a look at no, not look at history. It's um, but it's a something. You look at all the numbers. They take all the people in the world and they break it down to 100 people and how many people are you know are sick and have, like say if you woke up with any change in your pocket uh, on your dresser. Uh, you're wealthier than uh, two billion people. If you woke up with health and all these things are about realizing all the things that we have, we live we live 95 percent better than the rest of the world. We have no idea. We have how many how many places we have clean water to go for. And by the way, is my battery holding up? Is it? Would you think? I should be okay. Got, got to check on that. Hey, I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. Yeah, no, it's just, you still see me. It's blink and red, but I still see you. All right, hold on. Sorry, we're good, we're good. This is blinking red. Let me see. Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. For blinking red, we're good. Hey, you gotta do multiple jobs, you know? Come on. We <laughs> multitask, right? Yeah, you're good at it. But when you think about all that, and uh, I think what you said, you, you guys still going with me on this? I'm on page four. We good? You still good? Yeah. You with me? Okay. Because, you know. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but I think that when I really realized it's about being molded, you know, and about what that means. Uh, which came into this thing with us uh, from Mike Kessler. He has a great show at 3 p.m. Well, yeah. uh, it's called uh, To Every Man and Answer. Right. And at 4 p.m. he comes on and uh, has a half hour from his uh, thing. Amazing, uh, really straight shooter guy. I mean, that's why I, I like straight shooters like Missler, Mike Kessler, a lot of people. They just tell you how it is, <laughs> you know, you know, live with well, it or not. Ahead. Because you discover who you are, the gift that is in you. God helps us to discover what is in us. Now that we are making ourselves who we are, it is all God who reveals us to us. Pretty cool. Yes. Because uh, that's it. We have to realize, oh, wow. Oh, okay. Like Joseph, 13 years you know, in jail that's and right. being sold in slavery. He goes, you ever try to be someone or something you are not? It doesn't work. God reveals who we are in him, not what the world tells me to be. God mm -hmm. does. An important part of Christianity, God knows what he put in us. He put in certain talents and abilities. Every one of us, even though we don't see it sometimes. He goes, uh, only God knows how he has maximized what he has in us. All for the purpose to save the lost world for him. And that's it. Everything he's doing, not about the next house or the car or your outfit or what food you might eat. It's all about that next person that you might meet out of nowhere. How many times has that happened? Right. That, you know, it's one thing that I think Ivy and I talk about uh, being of action. You know, it's another thing, oh, I pray for you, brother. I, pray, you know, I know you're hungry. I pray for you. Mm -hmm. You need a burger? Let me, let me get you a burger. Right? And all of us can buy somebody a burger. You know, I swear to you, I was, I was so when I just moved to my place, I've been in my new place about three months now, which has, by the way, been a blessing too. And so the thing is, is that, huh, we good? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You go ahead. Okay. So anyways, so I'm, I'm getting, I was at, uh, I was supposed to go to a meeting on Sunday, and I get in my car, I stop Jack the Box, I like their little, they had this cool breakfast sandwich, and so I got that. And I'm getting in the car, I swore to you, I heard the Lord, he said, the Lord said, give that guy a couple bucks. And I go, what? He goes, give him a couple bucks. I think his name was Isaiah, too, if I remember. Jeremiah, oh, Jeremiah. And I went up to him, and I said, you hungry? He goes, yeah. I says, 
And then I was about to take a couple bucks. I, I swear to you, I, I can't say I audibly heard this, but I said, you got to give more than two bucks. <laughs> you know, and just little things like that that have exactly. happened. Mm -hmm. I remember this in New York. I used to call it my train stories. I would text myself my little morning train <laughs> stories. And I'd be on the train, and people would come up. they go get a quarter or something, 50 cents. I'd go, for what? Who want to get a coffee? I go, well, they ain't going to get you a coffee. Come on. And they had these bordegas all over the place, right? So we, they were like little mini, uh, so they weren't 7-Elevens, but they were like uh, little fast food, or little fast uh, convenience stores. And so, so uh, I take them in there and I said, are you hungry? And you, it's just funny how some of them, I gave them my phone number, they would call me, we, I would be able to develop relationships. Mm -hmm. I, remember it was, I remember this one guy, he was, uh, I, was, I was on Halloween and I, would take, I had to switch trains to this one particular station. So I got on this train. Half the train was on this side. There was nobody on the other side. And there was this guy all disheveled, screaming, Nobody cares! Nobody loves me! Nobody loves you! And I'm like, okay. And there would be times like that. And I'd say, okay, Lord, is this one of those times? And so if it wasn't, I had to plan it out because I knew how many stops I had to the next stop so I could do my exit stage left. You know? So then I go up to him. I'm looking around everyone. I go, all right, this is one of those. So I get up, look at everybody, and I walk to him. I go, we love you, man. Aww. <laughs> people were looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm, I'm like, yeah, right? So now I go up to him. I go, what's your name, man? He goes, Mike. I says, Mike, I'm David, right? And I shake it. He shakes it. Nice guy. He's a really nice guy. I says, you know, I love this line from uh, Ghostbusters. I go, you know you're scaring the straights, right? <laughs> and they go, what? I go, look, dude, man. Everybody, says, everybody got stuff. I said, God loves you. And go on with that. So basically, I said, you need a couple bucks? He goes, nah, I'm good. I said, dude, you need a couple bucks. I can tell. So we get out, and all of a sudden, I come to my stop. We have to switch the trains. So I'm going to go to Staten Island for a Halloween party. And, uh, and so this, I'm getting out of the train. This young man, he had to be about 21, 22, grinned like this. He just went, that was awesome. Aww. I go, well, thank you. You know? He goes, man, I says, well, I says, look, I, says, I believe in Jesus. And I, and I just kept going for the witness thing, right? Because I had an audience, and my words mattered. And my actions mattered. Mm -hmm. So it's not just my words, but my actions. Right. And I have stories like that, that um, I remember this big, tall black guy. I mean, big guy. And you think he, you know, and he's doing this thing. He's hitting the door. He wants to get attention. And I, and I didn't know him from nothing. And I says, you know that don't work. I go, what? <laughs> I says, hey, look at yourself. You're a big, tall black guy. He says, you're scaring people. I go, I'll give me a couple bucks if you stop. Right? And, and, and he stopped. And then eventually got to know him over time. And then he started it up again. I go, well, did they teach you anything? Don't do that. And we became friends. And I, saw, I would see him on a lot of my commutes. You just never know. And I only share the stories not to blow rewards of heaven, but to entertain you a bit to say, you never know. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have that kind of person. I'm a guy. I know it's different for guys than women. But I, I mean, but the guy, the guy with half the people on this side of the train yeah. was one of the yeah. best ones. So anyway, I know I'm not diverting, but these funny stories about the word really do apply to what I'm teaching tonight, or sharing, I'm not even teaching. And he goes, let's see here, oh here, Solomon's Prayer, yeah, this is interesting. He asked, so God, when Solomon's Prayer, he asked for wisdom to run the country, right? And as you know, uh, God gave him many things, but then he, but he didn't ask for all the best things. His words uh, were important when he was young, and unfortunately it didn't end well, you know, because his wisdom, that's, another, that's the other side of all this. When God answered prayers, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, I mean, Solomon, he didn't fare so well. And so because of that, um, um, so, we, uh, so what it is, but it was in the Bible that for our enlightenment and education, something to learn from. Uh, let's see here, this is a good one. Are we doing good on time? You want to do? It's we got 816? Are we good? Ding, 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 ding. I'm into page five. Couldn't make this part two? We or? can wrap it up pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to make this part two. Right okay, got gotcha. you. You got you enjoying this? Yeah. yeah. You got to do part two. Yeah, we're going to have to be yes. part two. For Next those week. who want to return. Yeah. So, yes. but Next basically. Week. Next week. Yeah. But the neat yeah. thing is, is that when he was a child, the thing is, is that what he asked for, the speech pleased the Lord. Solomon had asked for the right things. He didn't ask for anything. He just wanted the wisdom to judge properly. And I think that's the neat thing. So he says, so if you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David, then I will lengthen your days. When you hear God's grace and truth, we go from temporal beings to eternal beings. You go, what kind of reward do we have in eternity? That is why the word is important. Uh, that one from my Kessler, and I'll be coming in for landing. 
Um, knowing that Jesus died for us on the cross and seeing religions trying to make people earn the way to salvation. If you die today, will you go to heaven? He goes, Mike said, I can do, I can, I do the best I can. Whoa, you better be right. You know, people say, do you know, are you going to go to heaven? They go, well, I try to do the best I can. Eh, not a good answer. Right. Not a good answer. I know I'm going to. Yeah, I do. And when I'd say, I'd say it's 100% here. Right. If not, this is What's a good, good if this is a good message for you then. What's so, a good answer? Yeah, right. The answer is that you have to know about eternity and about Jesus. That's why, I, well, lately, my latest one is, is, you know, whether you believe Jesus rose from the dead or not, it's important to know that. And, yeah. and as me, I tell them this, about, and, I, and I sometimes throw it in there, I said, look, I'm a Jewish Christian. In fact, I tell people, I'm a Jew who's a Christian, I'm an American who has Russian heritage. If I seem a bit confused, I don't explain a lot, you know? And because of that, I use the humor to do it because of the fact that I told them, they said, you're Jewish, and I go, well, I said, it took me to become a Christian and become a better Jew, okay? Yeah. Because when I was bar mitzvah, we were taught how to read, write, and speak Hebrew, we did not learn the history, and when some Christian friends, some Christians, that I was not a Christian, and I was in their apartment, and we were, he was, the guy was a really good cook. And uh, I remember, I was a cool, I was a big notch on someone's Bible, by the way, being a Jew, yeah. And so basically, when he started showing me things in the Old Testament, which I barely knew, and he showed me things in the New Testament where things were fulfilled, mm -hmm. I went, wow. So all of a sudden, there's four of them. They all, like, swarmed me, right? <laughs> and then they went, well, here, let me show you this. Well, let me show you that. Which, I, one thing led to another, and it interested me, and that's what got me. <coughs> they cared. How and that's the Huh? How old? 22. 22. And, uh, and so, anyway, so to come in for landing, the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. A gift. It is not wages. God gives us salvation. I can say that if I die today, I will go to heaven. How do I know this? Because God said so. We recognize our bankrupt position. And uh, heaven is a real place and so is hell. The good news is nobody has to go there. People go there because they rejected God's plan in our lives. Because uh, people believe a lie. Wisdom and knowledge comes through hearing God's word. Use the power God has given us, which is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Bravo. You like it? Bravo. Let's come back for part two. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see. Awesome.